Hi, my name is uh, Mark, and this is my friend Chuck. We are going to be introducing the lightning talks. This is the best part of EuroPython, except for obviously the last talk, because the speaker's probably still here. <laughs> uh, so in a moment, I'm going to hand it over to Chuck to explain the rules for the lightning talks for all the newcomers that stuck their hand up this morning. Um, so in fact, I will do that now. That's very important to know the rules because uh, we will tell you off if you uh, violate the rules. So, um, uh, so for any talks that is promoting the uh, other conferences, you only have two minutes instead of five minutes. So um, other talks that's talking about something not promoting a conference, you have five minutes. Um, also, uh, please uh, remember, don't we are a friendly community, so please, only positive noises, don't boo people. You will be told off if you do that. Um, so also, when, um, uh, as usual, if the speakers almost run out of time, we will do this. Can we practice? Yes, and so that we make these annoying passive aggressive noises to annoy the speakers so they know that they have to finish. And then when they're finished, of course, big clap. Yeah, you can cheer if you want to. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, also, um, also, uh, I'll hand it back to Mark. <laughs> she stole my bit. <laughs> so, we're going to practice that again. There are three positive noises you will make at the end of every lightning talk this evening. So, the first noise is the clapping noises. Can we have a big, loud clap, please? And the second noise is the whooping. Can we have lots of whooping, please? Woo! And there's the third noise, which is the foot stamping. Can we have lots of foot stamping, please, on this lovely wooden floor? And now, Radomir, if you'd like to take your place. So we have inserted an extra slot in front of the lightning talks this evening. We're going to do this every night this week. Um, where Radomir, who is the inventor of the Pew Pew system, which we have all been given as part of our um, conference. So first, Radomir is going to give a quick talk, I believe, about how the Pew Pew device came to be, how you, yes. how you developed it. Actually, actually, I have a talk about that on Friday, so I'm just going to explain how to use it. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to have some quick demos of software that people have written in the last few days um, on their Pew Pew devices in the workshops. Uh, and so we would encourage people in the next couple of days, if you would like to come up to the stage at the Lightning Talks and give a quick demo of something you've built on your Pew Pew, um, then talk to Radomir. Um, he'll be around the conference. Uh, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get you up here to show everybody what you've done. So that, that's an extra kind of lightning talk within a lightning talk. It's going to be great. So can you make those three fantastic noises for Radomir, please? <laughs> Woo! Okay, so uh, I only have a few minutes, so I'll try to be very quick. You probably have already received those things, and if not, then you can get them at the reception downstairs. And uh, you probably are wondering what they are. So there, there are a thing that was designed to make a circuit Python, well, to make Python games on a workshop. The problem with workshops is that uh, everybody brings their own laptop and uh, everybody has something else installed on it. Everything except for the thing that you need for the workshop. And uh, you usually lose half of the workshop time just installing things and getting them to work and so on and so on. So uh, once MicroPython was created and uh, after that CircuitPython, which is a more beginner-friendly version of MicroPython, uh, I figured out wh why not create a device that lets you do, that has everything uh, installed on it already and then you just connect it to the computer and use any text editor you have in there uh, to do it. That's easy to do because on Circuit Python, when you, when you connect uh, your device to the computer like this and switch it on, uh, it will come up as a USB drive called Circuit Pi. And you can see files on this USB drive. And those files are basically Python code that is running on the device. There is also a readme file in here, 
where you have a link to the full documentation. That link is also printed on the back of the device. And where you have a basic summary of the, of the API for the device. Uh, if we visit that link, let me just copy it. And Uh, we will get the documentation on the read the docs, of course. Uh, there is the same library reference you have in the, in the readme, but also information about the device itself, which is this version 10.2. This device is actually 10.3, but electrically there are no differences. Uh, so everything is online. There are links in there in the community section to the uh, mailing list, to the Discord channel for CircuitPython, and to the GitHub repository where you can find all the code and all the designs. That's not important right now. Uh, the important thing is that there is a bouncing ball tutorial in there, which you can uh, follow to program your device uh, yourself, uh, a simple demo of a pixel going around the screen. It's really a step-by-step thing, uh, so hopefully it will be possible to follow it uh, in like 20 minutes or something like that. And then you will be ready to write your own things. And uh, the things you, you, you make, uh, you know, people have, uh, we already had uh, workshops the past two, two days on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, helping people to, to, to go through this tutorial and uh, also to develop some new things for, for this device. Because it doesn't have to be games, right? You can display some, oh, some awesome animation and wear it through the conference to, to show off your programming skills and, or have like a, a slogan scrolling there to, to show your political stance or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, be nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things like that. So we are going to show some of the things that people have made. And uh, do we have the camera? Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That to me, and now I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we will have a camera here so that you can see it on the big screen, hopefully. Maybe I will just hold it. And uh, we can use advanced programs, maybe VLC. That should work. If not, yep. So, please, I will hold it over your arm. Or, or maybe I will hold it and you can <laughs> stand here, please, <laughs> and demonstrate your program and I will hold it. Hold it over the device. This, you mm -hmm. hold it and, and ah. then you, you okay. can, and you can talk about it. No. I will hold the, <laughs> come here to the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> and explain what is, it is, right. Oh, uh, yeah, we have inception. Can someone guess what movie this is? <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, this one is actually non-interactive, so if I press the buttons, nothing happens, or does it? Well, you can try yourself, because I will publish the code. It's very short. And yeah, that's that. OK. Right. Next. OK. <laughs> OK, let's. Let's, let's see if we can shadow this. Okay, now you can see this. Now, we got with the Pew Pew a lot of nice games to play with. So I thought we should need some serious software as well. And that's why I wrote a text editor for the Pew Pew. Woo! <laughs> uh, at the top corner, you can see the cursor blinking. At the bottom corner on the right, you can see another cursor blinking showing you that you would need to scroll down to see the rest of the text. Um, so this, of course, uh, as everybody uh, will understand, is Morse code, because Morse code usually has like uh, five to six characters, so it fits perfectly on the pew pew. And the Morse code for the letter E is like dit. So if I now play back the message, you can read that it actually works. Woo! 
So, uh, hold on. Uh, come on. I'll just go down here. What's better? No. It's worse. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will uh, give over Twitter a link where you can download this because this means, like on parties, you can then on the fly set the text of your pew pew. Hey, it's me again. Um, so this is my device. Oh, I found it weird. It's Inception. Okay. Um, so it's a heart blinking, and then it could go um, very slow or very fast. I'm excited. And then it could be small. It could be big. And then um, I could stop it. Like my stop, my heart stopped beating. It could still go small, but it stopped beating. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Because, because he made a, a 3D engine for it, so <laughs> he deserves a, a, a lightning talk of it. All. So thank you very much, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we will probably we will repeat that for every lightning talk. So if you have anything, if you have made anything uh, with Pew Pew uh, that you would like to show here. Uh, please, please uh, come to the next lightning talk queue in there, and, and uh, we will let you let you show it here. Thank you. Thank you, Radomir. So, if the next speaker would like to come and set up, you're actually plugging in a laptop. Excellent. Um, so, you probably watched that and thought to yourself, "Yes, I need to get up on that stage. How do I get up on that stage to give a lightning talk?" So, I'm going to tell you how. So. Um, our system, I haven't encountered another conference with this system, but with our system um, we've been using for about 12 years now. There is a big sheet of paper downstairs on a column by the um, reception desk uh, where you've got your badges. And um, if you go along in the morning as early as possible, you may find some space on that. And you can use that space to write the title of your talk, your name as clearly as possible, and ideally your Twitter handle so we can get in touch with you, or your um, Telegram handle if you're in the EuroPython group. Are you ready to go? There is nothing else on the screen, though. No. <laughs> well, Technical difficulties. So this is when I tell a joke about a tractor. <laughs> so the farmer who lives near me. <laughs> Don't, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. They, they love tractor jokes. <laughs> I, so there's a farmer who lives near me, and he has this vehicle, and he uses it to plow perfect circles. I think it's a protractor. <laughs> oh, come on. It was a terrible joke. <laughs> I'm not telling that tractor joke. That's not my joke. How are we doing? Are you getting any closer? No. So we're getting any feed into the, oh, can I promote into the matrix? Ice cream sprint? Oh. Okay, uh, I have an ice, ice cream sprint announcement. Who went to the ice cream sprint today? Yay! We have the best time ever at lunchtime. So uh, I, I think that I've got to do it tomorrow because I found an ice cream place which is like around 10 minutes walk from here near the river near the bridge and the ice cream, I would say, is the best in this city, even though I'm only here like uh, my, fi my fifth day is here, but uh, I think it's the best ice cream in the world and uh, yeah, welcome to join me tomorrow uh, lunchtime. I would post, uh, I would call, like, I would say it in the telegram, so um, you're welcome to have ice cream with me, but it's cash only, please prepare cash and yeah, I won't pay for you, so yeah. So more seriously, in terms of the lightning talks, um, there don't seem to be very many people here who haven't given a talk. But if you haven't given a talk and you would like to, the lightning talks are a great opportunity to do that. There's loads of energy in the room. You can talk for five minutes or less. It's really important. You can stand up and say something that's important to you in one minute if you want to. And you will still get a huge round of applause from all the wonderful people in this room.
<laughs> and that is my lightning talk. See, normally I use these slots to encourage people to, to give talks, but it turns out that everybody in the room has already given a talk, and we've just had a keynote talk on giving, giving talks. Haven't give a talk before. I think Alex asked before, who, have, who hasn't given a talk before? Who hasn't given a talk ever, ever, ever before? Oh, where are the hands? Like, it was some hands. <laughs> yeah, I see some. Yeah, so lecturing talk is the perfect place to start your first talk, because uh, I could talk about my experience in Pico, Namibia. So, um, yeah, so... I went to Namibia. Ooh, um, I think uh, somebody's going to present about uh, PyCon Africa later, but uh, my experience about going to Namibia is amazing. Um, so uh, the first day of the conference, and then people was like, oh, what's a lightning talk? You know, like they, some of them, like, really is the, the first Python conference there. So, um, so some, of, some of us would travel all the way to, to Namibia. So some of us are, like, are already speakers. So, okay, we'll demonstrate what's a lightning talk. And, like, we, we kind of give, it, give a lightning talk about anything, you know. And then the next day, there was a guy, you know, like, okay, first of all, people, Namibians are lovely. They, they, they queue up for lightning talk the second day, you know. There's, like, some students, you know, like, anybody. And then... One guy, he just went up to the stage, and he had no slides, nothing, grabbed the mic, and then he was like, oh, actually, today my brother tell me to come to this conference. I came to this conference, but I have no idea what is a Python. <laughs> and, then, and then he talked about his first PyCon ever. Oh, I'll tell the story later. Oh, I just need to get my video playing. Hello video, here it is. All right. Hi. I'm Kubitsen and I... Oh, okay, hi. I'm Kubitsen and I wanted to show you something. No, I, I prefer this one because I need the hands. I wanted to show you something I did on my PewPew, Pew, but it's not something I did yesterday because uh, I've actually worked with the PewPew Pew before, so I wasn't in the group that showed this stuff before. And uh, I even did that before. I even knew that there would be pupils at this conference. So that was a nice surprise for me to see that every one of you will now get one of these devices too and will be able to do the thing I did as well. So I've been playing with MicroPython for a while. And uh, in particular, I love these pupu devices that Vladimir invented. And as you can see, I own a couple of them. So one day I asked myself whether I could make a 3D game on this device. And so I sat down one weekend and gave it a try, and to my own surprise, it worked quite well. You can try it for yourself. Here's the download link. It will work on your conference pew pew. Although slowly. You can make it run a bit faster if you install the latest beta version of the CircuitPython firmware. Uh, there's instructions for that in the documentation in the link that you can find on the back of the device. Uh, I want to give you a quick glimpse into how this was made. How do you do such a thing on such a small device with not much computing power and in a language like Python that is not optimized for runtime speed but for development speed? The usual approach of doing such games in the days before there was uh, 3D graphics hardware was a 2D ray caster. 2D because the map is actually two-dimensional. All you can do in the third dimension is walls of a constant height. You can texture the walls. It's a bit hard to see here because my camera has trouble with the bright display. You cannot texture the floor and ceiling. These are just uh, flat colors. A raycaster, I'm not going to go into much detail on what that is, but it's pretty simple and involves some uh, geometrical computations like finding intersections of line segments. But there's two problems with this approach on such a small device. First, these geometrical uh, computations are most easily done using floating point numbers, and uh, the microcontroller in here does not have a floating point unit, so floating point math is slow on here. We only want to do integer math on this device. And second, to do this efficiently, you need to put your geometry into some kind of data structure that will make it easy to look up efficiently what is where in space. And such data structures take memory. And we don't have a lot of memory on here either. 
So the approach I came up with is let's pixelate the world. Pixels are naturally integer based and uh, my map now is basically a pixel image instead of a vector image as it was before. Now pixel images take some memory as well but maybe I can make the pixels coarse enough that it still fits into memory. After all, you can't see much detail anyway on this uh, small low resolution display. And instead of doing exact math with these lines, I now do pixelated lines. To draw pixelated lines, there is an efficient algorithm called Bresenham's algorithm that uh, only uses integer math and even only additions, not even multiplications. So that's why it's very fast. And that's it basically for the principle. Implementing all this took a uh, little more than 100 lines of Python code. And if you want to know more about it, talk to me. I'm here at the conference or uh, contact me on Twitter or email me or uh, anything else. If you're a better game designer than I am and are able to make a nice interesting game on top of this, that would be awesome because Myself, I still haven't quite figured out what works and what doesn't on this uh, low resolution display. Thank you and have fun. Woo! That's amazing. That's like, that's like playing Doom or Minecraft on, on that thing. It's like, whoa, it's very good. Okay, um, uh, I'll finish my story quickly. So that guy, he's like, he's really his first Python conference or maybe his first Py Python experience and then Oh, yeah, we are very smooth, so yeah, I'll continue later. Are you ready? I yeah. Audio. Oh, uh, audio. I think HDMI include audio already. Yeah, it should be fine. Oh, oh it's not. Okay, uh, while you're shouting it, I'll continue my story. <laughs> um, so, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, that guy, like, his, his, that was his first Python experience, and then he was enjoying it, and then he gave his lightning talk, and then at the talk he was like, oh, and then now everybody just tell me that I could say something for five minutes, and I just do. So I was like, whoa, really? So if he can give a lightning talk, I think everybody can give a lightning talk, so please sign up tomorrow, and then I'll be sure to be there early tomorrow because I'm sure that tomorrow everybody wants to give a lightning talk, so you have to fight for your own spot. Um, oh, you have to change, change the, the settings. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, who wants to give a lightning talk tomorrow? If you want to let me know. Yes. Just want no way. No, no, you are hiding it because you, you would secretly wake up at 6 a.m. and come here to sign up, right? Can we hear the music? No? Okay. Um, yeah, so um, show show event on Thursday. Who's going to show show event? Yay! Yeah, so it will be in the, in, uh, if you have been here for the training, so it will be back in the university. And then outside is lovely. I've seen there's a like ping pong table there. Uh, if you have bring your, you know, your ping pong ball and so, can, can we hear it? Oh, no. No, no, not yet. So yeah. I, oh, by the way, I'm horrible with ping pong, right? So um, even though like people think that like I'm, you know, I grew up in Hong Kong, I'm Asian, I'm ethnically Chinese, I suck at ping pong ball. Like I can't play ping pong ball. I'll be like chasing the ball around because it bounced. And then, um, so there was a story, right? So in my previous job, so um, we have like have a social event with my colleagues, and then we went to a place that's like very famous in London. It's called Bounce. So they have all these ping pong table in the club. So people will drink there and then also play some ping pong, which is fun. You know, there's like all these like uh, neon lights and stuff. And then people assume that I am very good at ping pong, but at the end they just all laugh at me because I was drunk and I was playing ping pong. So basically, this ball hitting my head, it was like flying behind me and I was like looking around and I was like, you know, finding the balls and stuff, it's hilarious. So please don't get me drunk on Thursday and play ping, like, and ask me to play ping pong ball because uh, it would be a disaster. So yeah, enjoy Thursday, it would be great. I hope it's not raining. So um, yeah, we will be having grilled sausage, I guess, this morning if I pay attention. Yeah, that would be great. I love, I love the German sausage, like, 
they are very tasty. Um, <laughs> it's better than the British one. I don't know why, but like, yeah, um, I like, I like. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah, seriously, I'm talking about the food. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, last year, I went to Germany three times, right? So, um, the first. Uh, oh, I went. Uh, the first time I went is like I went to Hamburg and. Um, oh, yay! Woo! Okay, uh, my name is Moisés, I'm from Brazil. Uh, this lightning talk, I actually prepared it for EuroPython last year, but I couldn't make it in time. Like, there were too many lightning talks. And this is something called Fox Dot. So basically, it plays some sounds. And I'll skip this one, so zero was basically the same one you were listening. So you can like change the note. You can go through a list of notes or a chord, if you know which ones, the right ones to play. But if you try to make some math, it will break, as you can see down there in the console. But if you create a pattern, you can then... Oh, I skipped some. No, I didn't. Yeah, this one is... If you play a tuple, it will play all of them at the same time, and you can make some math with it. But it's not just this boring one, you can also have a bass. or some drums. Yeah. Okay, I'm racing here, my heart, as the previous talk was saying. Okay, I set some scale and some stuff here. I created some notes. So, this is a bass line. It kind of might make some sense, but also we don't have the right amount of silence because music is not just about sounds, but also the space of the silence. So, not yet. I also have some chords, which I will stop. And I also have some beat. And then now I can play everything together. Oh, what is it supposed to play? Huh? Yeah. I, I always do this mistake. You might know this one. So, you guys know this song, right? And this is my sock from uh, PyCon CZ 2017. I have something special in it. Thanks. That is what happens when you spend a... That is what happens when you spend a year preparing for a lightning tour.
Um, so in a moment, Mero is going to uh, give the next talk. Uh, he doesn't need any preparation, uh, any setup. Uh, but could we have the conference um, speakers uh, who will have their presentation on the Google Drive um, just up at the side of the stage, please, ready to talk next? Thank you. Take it away. Thank you. Clap, please. Hi, my name is Miroslav Šedivý, and this is how my keyboard looks like. Two years ago, exactly this place, like 600 kilometers to the south in Rimini, I stood at this place, and I tried to persuade it to tell you a little bit about the keyboard layout that I am using. Anybody else using the same keyboard layout? No? No, because I have looked over your shoulders today, I have seen you have learned nothing. So, this is the US standard keyboard layout, which is perfect if you want to program in Python, or you want to write in some text, for example, the type the name of the Welsh uh, city or town, or in a few other languages. So it works perfectly well as long as you type in English or similar languages. Pretože ako náhle chcete napísať moje priezvisko, ktoré je šedivý, je tam mekčia dlžeň, na to potrebujete slovenskú klavesnicu, ktorá nie je kvertej, ale kverc, čísla sú hore so shiftom a všetko napravo je troška iné, ako vidíte. Uh, wenn man jetzt aber auf Deutsch schreiben will, also mit den ganzen Umleuten, a o u, schaffen es, dann braucht man die deutsche Tastatur, das ist auch kverc, so wie die slovakische, und uh, die rechts und oben sieht es auch ein bisschen anders aus. Und wenn man jetzt das große schaffe es schreiben will, in Deutschland gibt es sowas, in der, in der Schweiz nicht, dann kann man das mit der deutschen Tastatur nicht machen, weil Schiff scharf es ist, macht Fragezeichen. Schiska Klavesnice se podoba slovenske klavesnice, nejaká nabodenička, sú tam ešte ř, hačky, čárky a tak. No ale v podstate, když chcete psát, tak vidíte, že vpravo a nahoře máte zase trošičku problémy nalézt všechna písmenka. Est-ce que quelqu'un a déjà écrit sur un clavier français? C'est ni qwerty, c'est ni qwerty, c'est azerty, la M il est ailleurs, le point on le fait avec un shift, mais si on veut écrire tous les accents circonflexes, tréma, etc., c'est dit, on a besoin d'un clavier français pour programmer, euh, non. Um, <rires> Teclado castellano, si necesitáis escribir los signos abiertos de interrogación o exclamación o la ñ, necesitáis ese teclado, que es aún más diferente y más difícil para aprender cómo escribir y para programar. Um, Claviatura posca es bardzo podobna americanskej, ale ya chcete pisar do kogoś, do szenarzy babczykiego, żeby żeńczy Szykiewicz i mieszka szczęście, że wożyce powiat wękowody, jest potrzeba klawiatury fra, uh, polskiej i z kropkami, ogonkami, kreskami, coś tam, coś tam. Uh, Klawiatura i ta... Tastiera italiana non è più facile di scrivere perché tutte le lettere accentuate maiuscole non è possibile di scrivere perché ci sono sempre due lettere uh, accentuate minuscole. Uh, po svenska anvendermo o medring, o magyar abc ben kete zseles ékezet elalható, és kvankam esperanto, esta uh, internacia lingua, akkau ille existas kelkai tre speciale literai. And we all only scratch the surface. So imagine that every day you type in a few European languages and look like how your keyboard and your brain has to look like because you have to switch between all these keyboard layouts. You know it. You remember? <laughs> with, which problems with international keyboards layout we have? Uh, we can switch uh, with using uh, character maps and uh, copy paste uh, some characters. This doesn't uh, work very well if you want to type fluently. But fortunately, in the 70s and 80s, on the keyboards, uh, there was a compose key. A compose key means that I just type compose and then two other characters, and in a combination, it will, in return, give, return a new character that with all the special characters that I need in other European languages. And it works in German, French, all the languages that we have seen until now. Uh, how it works, it is actually already in your system. In that file, you have over 6,000 lines with all the combinations that you can have a look at. If it is not enough and you want to type in some obscure languages or uh, images, you can always define in the same uh, way uh, your xcompose file. And your keyboard doesn't have this compose key, so you need one. Uh, you can define some key that you don't use every day, so like the art uh, right window or print screen or something like that. Everything you have to do, set XKB map, option, compose, and for example, menu, and then you can use it as a compose key. There's not, I'm st already standing here, we are going to hack another key. Which one is it? Yes, it's caps lock. We can make a control of, out of it because it's just left uh, from the A. Uh, our pinky key is very common because 
very convenient if you want to we, uh, type uh, control, which is usually very far away. Uh, what we do is we just say our caps lock is control modifier. But that's not everything. Let's do something more with it. Because our caps lock can take functions of two keys. It can be control and it can be escape. Because control you usually pre uh, press and uh, compare, uh, combine it with other key. Escape you just hit it, press it, and release it immediately. So you install escape, and then your caps lock will work as uh, both uh, keyboard layouts. Oh, no, I mean, both, uh, both uh, keys uh, at the same time. Then you put some nice stickers, and you're done. Thank you very much. How long do you prepare, how long do you prepare for your talk? <laughs> I, I think that takes more than a year, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, anybody want to, want me to continue the sausage story? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you're forced to listen to my um, my sausage story. Like uh, no, but uh, yeah. So last year, I went went to Germany. The first time I went to Germany was uh, going to Hamburg, and then I was like, yes, German sausages. So basically, what happened is like when I wake up, I'll look for a place that I could have sausage, and then <laughs> and then so the whole day will be like finding places so I can have sausage, and then at the end, I would go to like. Because I near my hotel, there's like a little store that they sell sausages. So I would have sausage from breakfast to to after like drunk food will be sausage. So um, right. yeah, but like uh, but yeah. Also, I uh, now I try different things, not just sausage like uh, schnitzels and um, pretzels and yeah. So uh, I like I like food. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, some other things. Uh, what should I talk about? Not sausage, maybe. Oh, I don't have to talk about anything good. <laughs> no. Oh, I think it changed the resolution. What did the farm? Can I? Hello. You have yeah. Fun. What did the farmer say when he lost his tractor? Where's my tractor? Yes. Yeah. Hang <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I, okay, go ahead. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How do you think what will happen if you will end up in Berlin and you are a lady and you are software developer, Python developer? The problem is here that uh, probably you will start looking for friends. If you are alone, then you will probably go to the meetup page, looking for some communities, and they are welcoming, they are open and nice. And I found some communities uh, which I was interested in, but I end up being asked if I'm not a software developer for sure, if I'm an HR because I'm a lady. The problem is here that I was like confused. I'm, I'm a software developer. And then uh, some other girl, because we were apparently just two in the whole community, in the whole meetup, and that's why we were recognized as not software developers, because we are non-men people. Um, so the other girl, uh, she approached me and said, wow, hi, nice to meet you. I'm so happy we can talk about software now. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then I found out about Pi Ladies, and then uh, it was a very nice community. Everyone was so open, and uh, all the ideas were appreciated. I could speak as I'm a girl and software developer. I could be myself. But I was uh, lacking some kind of um, exchange of ideas with different people, and um, we have different thinking. All of us, it doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman, we have different ideas, and that's great. And to be honest, you have to follow those rules in reality. You look like a girl, you act like a lady, you think like a man, and then you work like a boss. And here comes the truth. I want to be myself. I want to be a lady, a girl, a woman. I don't want to be a man in any kind of um, stories. So the idea was to find out a community with all their support, being friendly, open, and uh, being inclusive and uh, open-minded, and to be a safe environment for everyone. So then ladies would be happy to come and share ideas, and they are not going to be asked if they are non-software developers, but HRs. And here's the answer. Here's the community. I'm one of the organizers together with a few more people. 
we are open-minded and we have at least 30 per percent of ladies in our communities and they feel safe there. We are based in Berlin and we know how to get on the top of the TV tower in Berlin with Python. So that's how we have uh, we had um, all the events. We different uh, we have different kind of um, formats. It's like um, lighting talks as well and uh, 30 minutes talks and also panels where um, it's like open questions. You can ask whatever you would like to know. We started recently in February this year, and every time we have new people, it's around like 70 new people every meetup. I was surprised how many developers are in Berlin, especially in Python. And usually we organize some events together with PyLadies to be supportive and open. And the next meetup is going to be on the 30, no, 23rd of July in Berlin. If you are interested in uh, participating or willing to contribute into our Ask Me Anything panel about how to be senior, please go with this link. And if you are interested to be a first-time speaker or maybe an experienced speaker, just looking for some opportunities, we are not looking for professionals. Uh, we are open to help everyone to prepare all the talks. <laughs> okay, I'm finishing. and. Um, there is a mystery. I will leave you with the mystery. One organizer left us for good, and this person in this room, you can find him. <laughs> Thank you. See? Yeah, that's oh. good. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Hi. I'm going to have to be quick because I have fewer minutes than I thought I would have. I want to um, remind you, because I'm sure you already know, about the very first PyCon Africa, which will take place next month in Accra, in Ghana. I'm uh, part of the organizing team uh, of that. There have been numerous African PyCons. Um, I went to the fifth. PyCon Namibia this uh, February, and I was in PyCon Ghana last year, and there are many others to visit which have also been uh, very successful. But this is the first Pan-African uh, PyCon. Here's the organizing team. There's Marlene Manhami. She's uh, uh, a director of the Python Software Foundation. Aaron, who helped put uh, Ghana's first satellite into space. Aisha, who gave a keynote here at EuroPython with me in 2016. Um, Michael, Abigail, part of the Django Girls team, Noah, and me. So these are people who have organized multiple conferences between them in the past. We have speakers from around the world. There's Anna Makarudze. She's a, a Django Software Foundation director, in fact, vice president. Um, Mustafa Sis from Google's AI lab. Uh, he's the head of the AI, AI lab in um, uh, Accra. And I'll have to move on because we don't have too much time. We've got some great sponsors, um, some of whom are here. Nexmo just uh, confirmed today, so thanks very much to them. Really pleased about that. We need more sponsors because we need more funds, especially for our financial assistance. Um, just to give you an idea about how people travel, they'll be taking an 11, a 10 or 11 hour bus journey from Lagos to Accra and back again together from um, the Nigerian community. Um, can you help us with sponsorship? We'd love some more money specifically for financial assistance. We also, even if you can't sponsor, we have a, a GoFundMe page, so please take a photo of that. If you can contribute a little bit of money to that, it will help someone because some of the costs are relatively very low. Others, such as travel, are higher, but every little bit will help. We need to, an extra 6,000 or so euros in order to cover all the financial assistance needs that we want to make. So take a note of that, please, africa.pycon.org. Perhaps you're even thinking of coming. Come and talk to me about that. I'll be around here until Saturday, and I'll be very happy to talk to you about 
uh, this PyCon Africa or any of the other PyCons that take place in Africa. Thank you very much. Mark, it's, a, it's time for a joke now. Oh, okay. I do have, a, a, joke. I do have another track to joke. <laughs> oh my god, this is so messy. Uh, okay. Uh, go. How did the farmer find his lost cow? He tracked her down. <laughs> Just enough time. <laughs> okay. Hello. So, picture this. You're in Mexico. You're in an all-inclusive resort, 30-degree weather, in the beach. Conference or vacation? Why not both? So <laughs> I'm here on behalf of the PyCon Latam organizing team um, to invite you to come to Mexico. We're going to have the first PyCon Latam on August 29th to the 31st. The call for proposal is already closed, but, you know, the there is uh, the sponsorship opportunity still open, volunteering still open, and the financial aid is still, well, actually, no, financial aid just closed two days ago. Um, let me think more details. I, I think, yeah, I think that was about it, really. <laughs> I made this for a 20 second presentation at PyCon, and like here, it's just too much time. <laughs> Big round of applause for All being right. quick, please. <laughs> Thank you. When is a tractor not a tractor? <laughs> when it turns into a barn. That was very good timing. <laughs> okay, here we are. Um, yeah. So I think many of you have heard about PyCon DE. There has been uh, eight PyCon DE so far, and I think you probably also heard about uh, PyData Berlin. Um, I think they started in 2014. Yeah, right. At VeroPython, actually. VeroPython aligned oh, with yes. Pygmy. And what happens if you bring like two good things together? One even bigger great thing. So actually, we talked and we decided it's not only the time to make specializing conferences, uh, so but to bring communities back together again, like here the Python and the data science communities. So uh, yeah, we have the conference in, Oct uh, in October uh, in, at Cosmos Berlin. Uh, I want to give you some facts about our proceedings so far. So we had a CFP uh, already. It's closed, we're sorry. Um, uh, we had like 450 submissions, which is in a way like, yeah, oh my god. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So actually, since this was like uh, many submissions, we basically, with the help of Arthur, like we were happy to uh, get to a, a community voting. Yeah? So we had like 33,000 votes on the community voting, which helped us recreating the program uh, of this conference. Um, major sponsorship is already sold out, sorry. Um, but we have diversity sponsorships still available and silver sponsors. We will offer free childcare and also like two thirds of the tickets are gone already. So this is like, it's, it's, it's really nice. I think it's really nice to have these communities working together yes. also. We decided this also like to uh, save some resources on the community side because running a big conference is a lot of work. And so, yeah, see you on the lead. Not all of you, because we don't have enough tickets for everyone. You left. Sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, is there one more? No, no there's not one more. There's now the raffle coming, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. The right? Yeah, yeah, what you're so, putting, so go. Okay, very good. So I'm already basically set up. So because we have some giveaways, and it was really challenging to think how can we distribute giveaways in a really fair manner? So we thought about, let's have a little raffle game. So um, uh, we just made this up. So how is this going to hold? How is it going to work? We have Pi Cassandra. Pi Cassandra will ask you a question. If you can answer this question with a clear yes, please stand up 
and then we will narrow it down and hopefully until there's one person left standing. So, okay, yeah, let's do it. Well, it's, it's really easy you get into. It. So, okay, let's ask Kai Cassandra. Stand up if you ever contributed to an open source project. Oh, oh wow. Well. <laughs> very good, very good. So, the next question is, keep standing if the day of your birth is odd. Odd. The day of your birth is odd. Okay, so half left. Okay. Keep standing if you traveled less than approximately, oh wow, 1100 <laughs> kilometers to come here. Okay. Keep standing if your first name contains upper or lower case, it doesn't matter, the letter C. Oh, 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 how many people are standing? Like, okay, okay, keep standing if your birthday contains the number. So the full birthday, day, month, and year. And we, uh, we have zero padded days and months. So just like, so. And okay, let's go. Nine. Ooh. Everyone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, so, okay, okay, so actually, uh, so... Uh, shall we run that again? Yeah, no, it's run again, it's time for a recursion. The recursion, recursion in Jupyter Notebooks is really easy, you just go up the slide again. <laughs> so... No, the keep... best contradicting each other. Huh? That's <laughs> the even. Uh, okay, okay. Skip, skip. Okay, skip, we skip this one, contradiction. <laughs> More than, okay. <laughs> Yeah, more than 22, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's basically also in a way a country. Let's skip that. <laughs> okay. Now with the names. Ta -da. S. Oh, oh, we have a winner. Oh, oh. No, two. Two, two. Yeah, but we have, three. oh, three. three. Yeah, but we have 14 books. Four, so five. It, okay, we have 14 books. That's a little bit slow. <laughs> so I'm blindly now grabbing into this. Shall we get them to come here? And, yeah, and we have a book on Flask. <laughs> People! Okay, we have more books later.
So I've been walking around the conference, and there's obviously lots of groups of people. Anybody who is here this morning for the intro introduction will know that there's a lot of new people, new faces here to Europython. Um, and this can be a slightly overwhelming environment. There's 1,200 people here, and if you come here and you don't know anybody, that can be kind of intimidating. And there's a really simple thing you can do, everyone in this room can do, to make life easier for the people who are trying to make new friends, and it is not to stand in circles. There's a thing called the Pac-Man rule, which is recommended at quite a few conferences now. And the idea is if you're standing with a group of people you know, leave a gap, just a gap for one person. And then if somebody comes in and joins you, then you, somebody steps apart again to make another gap. And this way you make your conversations welcoming for other people to join you. Are you, do you not have slides? I don't, I don't have oh, slides. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna offer more advice in a moment, but if you would like to start your talk. Hi, everyone. Uh, so the topic of my lighting talk is, is that the Python t-shirt you are wearing? And uh, if you love your job, don't listen to me. Uh, spend these five minutes checking the events in Basel tonight. The results are dancing. You can go, like, check your phone, do something else, just whatever, like sleep. Uh, but if you don't like your job, um, I was on, I've been to this uh, Python meetup in Köln, Köln in Germany a few months ago, and uh, when I was coming back, I was talking to a few women, you know, like socialized, and I was asking them, hey, so what do you do for your work? Like, do you like your work? Is it, is it, is it fun? And one was like, no, my, my, my work is not fun. Like, it cannot be fun. You know, what do you mean? Like, it can be, you know, well paid, not well paid. It can be stressful, it can be okay, it can be whatever, but not fun. Why some people say that? It's weird. And this, the other one com confirmed and said, um, yeah, true, it cannot be fun. And everything inside me was screaming, like, that's wrong. That's just so wrong. And that's why I'm giving this talk, because I have these feelings. Um, my job is fun, and it's always been fun, and I do data analysis in Python, and I really enjoy what I do, and I'm really passionate about what I do, and it's my hobby, and honestly, I would be doing it for free. Just don't tell my boss, because, you know, it's not good if your boss knows that, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just so crazy how many people are never questioning, like, if they enjoy what they do, you know, you don't have many lives, like, question yourself, ask yourself, like, am I happy with my work? Am I happy with my life? Um, I think these questions are really important, and because, as I always say, if tomorrow I'm 85 and I, I look at my life back and I ask myself, like, is data analysis in Python something I have been, I'm, I'm happy doing all my life? Like, the answer is yes, it is definitely yes, and I don't need time thinking about it. And that's, I think, questions which people should ask themselves, because if they don't, um, you run, you, you may run away from it, you know, may, you, you may avoid asking this question because you're afraid to confront yourself and like answer, yes, I am unhappy where I am, I'm, I'm unhappy with my job because as in informatics, you have so many opportunities, there are so many fields and so many bosses and companies like everywhere, so you don't have to be stuck with something you, you, you hate. And the purpose of my talk is the message, yeah, explore, talk to people, question if you like what you're doing, because at the end it's better for everyone. It's better for you, you feel great, you feel happy, and it's better for your boss, because you do a great job, and it's better for the company, and it's better for your friends, because they don't have to listen to you complaining to them every day. And I have people, I know people who go to work, complain about their wives, and then go to their wives and complain about their job. So don't be that, don't become that, like if it's too late, just try to change something as much as you can and if you already if you like just don't be that kind of person um, so yeah when my when my colleagues are making fun of me saying oh Sophia you're wearing Python shirt to work like that's crazy you're doing Python temporal henna tattoos you have Python bracelet you have Python stickers that's weird you're a nerd I'm just thinking you're just jealous that you don't like what you're doing <laughs> fantastic advice there Let's see. Yeah, we we'll give you a quick. Whoa, it's outside. <laughs> I hope so. I have to go to Munich. Oh. Tractor jokes. I've run out of tractor jokes. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you have another adapter. Uh. Oh, can I talk about my Python uh, 
Windows 7 joke? Yeah, I have a Windows 7 joke, uh, which, okay, if, if you have met me last year, you know that. Actually, I think that was my first live stream talk uh, about Windows 7. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it oh, really ready? It, okay. Now it does work. Yeah. All right, just give me a sec. Oh, uh, I'm okay. ready. Let's yes. Go. Let's go. Uh, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And unfortunately, we have just one life. We often spend it like this in our office, but sometimes we go to IT conferences. Don't get me wrong, I totally love conferences, and I'm also organizing them. But I just believe there is way more potential. As uh, Donald Walsh says, love begins at the edge of your comfort zone. So I decided to kick myself out of there. And I went to Pi Days Vienna conference on a motorcycle. I decided to avoid the highway to see the real scenery. And it was a beautiful scenery indeed, but it was still quite comfortable. Uh -huh. I had just to wait for a couple of hours until I met a thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah, that's a real picture. I, I got so wet, my phone got wet, it turned off, I had no GPS. I was running out of gas and I start to panic. But then I thought, isn't that exactly what you've been looking for? Out of the comfort zone, it's an adventure. <laughs> Next was Paikon San Sebastian. I did the same, except this time it was uh, three and a half thousand kilometers. Wonderful scenery, I met wonderful people, and I also met Leslie. Leslie is a hurricane that hit France <laughs> and Spain exactly a day after the conference. Fortunately, it was just on the coast, mostly, so I managed to escape and I got some skills in not getting wet, thanks to the <laughs> plastic bags and stuff like that. And I got totally addicted to adventure by then. So next was Pycon Italia, and what could possibly go wrong? Such a wonderful weather, mountains, haha, <laughs> five days later, you will not believe that. <laughs> Snow, wind, what the hell? I, I, I really had to take this, this picture with the conference badge because nobody believed in my skills of attracting the trouble. And my skills of avoiding getting wet were even, even better this time. <laughs> so next, here we go, Europython. I made a poll on Twitter, what's the most elegant way to get here, and motorcycle was not winning. Train was winning and the bicycle was winning, so why not? I took a train to Paris and I decided to cycle to here and then to Munich. And don't get fooled by this picture, I look happy because it's just the beginning. It was not <laughs> so easy. It was not easy at all. Imagine in the middle of nowhere, you remember the weather. It was so hot. Without water, without the signal on your phone, you have to fix your wheel again and again. And I had five patches just on the front wheel till I got to here now. But the scenery, the scenery was totally worth it. I mean, you cannot get that without oh. going through that challenge. It was ru like running a marathon, but every day. And when I crossed this sign yesterday evening, you can imagine my emotions, how cool it was, and how cool it is right now to be here and speak in front of you. So thanks for having me. Woo! That's not it. Oh, That's not, yet, not over not yet. yet. Not yet. That's not, not yet. over yet. I am yeah. not the only one who is doing these things. So uh, my friend Stefan Benel, whom you perhaps know, was taking a wonderful train journey on last Europython. I'm trying to convince him to give a lightning talk tomorrow, so I hope it works. So he also has his ways, and he likes cycling as well. And last but not least, while speaking about all of this fun of travel, uh, we should not forget that uh, not everyone can ride a motorcycle, and not everyone can ride a bicycle, and actually not everyone can even walk. Right, we should not exclude these people. And my last story, really quick one, will be about a friend of mine from Ukraine and his childhood friend, uh, Yuri. Yuri has a cerebral palsy, he cannot move at all. Yet his dream was seeing a mountains, even from the train window. Time passed, Evgeny grew up, and he never forgot about his friend's dream. So once he met a paragliding manufacturer, he asked them if they could maybe make, since they do backpacks, if they could make some sort of device that could help him carrying a very difficult, very, very heavy object, which was his friend. And they made it. With a lot of practice, with a lot of training, time passed, he came back to his friend in Ukraine and he said, well, that's the day we should make a dream come true. We are not just going to mountains, we are climbing the highest mountain of Ukraine. And here they go. Isn't that beautiful? He made it through a lot of pain and suffering. He made it and imagine the emotions that moment. And why I'm showing this, really, my bicycle trip, 
is nothing comparing to this, honestly. So I'm not special anyhow, and there are so many people in this world who do this daring, cool things, and so can you. So I just want to encourage you to give it a try, to go crazy, go daring, and just remember, we're all the community, and we should help each other. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've already run um, 13 minutes over time. We have time for one last lightning talk this evening. Um, so we'll be clearing the slate tomorrow morning. So if you were on the end of this list, um, come in early tomorrow and get on the top of tomorrow's list. Uh, and that was perfect timing. Yeah. Take it away. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm Alex. I will be talking about fuzzing black. So who knows uh, black, the sort of formato? Who uses black? There should be more hands. <laughs> so one day I was showcasing black to a friend of mine, and I thought, like, OK, I will add some more parentheses to the print statement, and we will show how black removes them. Yammer. No, I've got an error message. So that led, got me thinking, OK, Black has some internal safeguards, like the uh, formatting state should be important, like applying the formatting twice should give you the same results, or uh, the code after formatting should give the same abstract syntax tree. So the idea was born. Generate some source code, run Black on it, rinse and repeat until Blake finds a bug in itself. So there is a uh, testing package called Hypothesis, uh, which can do almost all of that for you, but you need, still need to write some uh, Hypothesis strategy to generate the source code. I'm a lazy programmer, so I thought ab about another tool called AFL uh, that implements uh, fuzzing. And uh, what fuzzing is, is you give fuzzing tool an input file or a set of input files. It runs them uh, through your code with coverage enabled, then change the bit in the input, runs it again, again, and again, until it finds uh, a bug or until it expands its coverage so it can basically uh, generate new uh, ways, new paths through your code. But the problem with AFL is that it's generally made for binary file formats, like compressed files, image files, executable files, where changing only a small bit or a byte will change the picture drastically. Uh, Python source code, changing one byte, will give you just different variable name or different function call. That's not fun. So what I did, I have went uh, to the Python source code, I got the Python grammar, I've got all the uh, keywords, all the punctuation marks from it, generated a set of strings, uh, fuzzing uh, engine could inject into my source code, uh, and gave it uh, to the fuzzer. In the end, uh, after almost like two weeks uh, running uh, fuzzing on my laptop, when I didn't uh, forget to open the lead, uh, it gave me four bucks in black that I've reported. And there's way more about fuzzing. Uh, you can minimize your test cases. You can uh, get you, your whole corpus of your test cases, like um, all the files, and select only those which gives you uh, enough coverage, uh, like, like a subset of test cases that gives you the same coverage. And there is a very cool book about fuzzing and Python, and it's a free online book at fuzzingbook.org. If you're interested in fuzzing, check it. And uh, I've put slides online and source code I've used online, so you can try fuzzing yourself. That's it. If you'd like to just stay seated for one more moment, there's going to be an announcement. More like a call for call for volunteers. A call to action. So, uh, if you if anyone wants uh, a cool yellow T-shirt from EuroPython, uh, there's still well, except the obvious. <laughs> you can you can sign up for a chair tomorrow if you want. So, like we have two more spots, uh, uh, free well free, 
for um, session chair tomorrow. So basically, uh, we need people who will uh, present the, the speakers and show them uh, you have 10 minutes more and things like that. So uh, come and talk to me uh, if you want to uh, volunteer. Thanks. Do it. It's a great way to meet new people. This is all about becoming part of the community, meeting new people. Can I have a big round of applause for all our Lightning Talk speakers this evening?